Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to focus on RDNA 3, specifically power consumption and a few things regarding features and performance. Now, we're going to tackle less the performance stuff because it's been talked about to death, but there are some very interesting updates I have here, particularly when it comes to the power consumption figures of RDNA 3. I say this in a not too light way, but this could really have a massive ramifications to AMD's product stack because of the low power consumption figures that we're going to be getting into here. Not just in terms of desktop, because of course lower power consumption means that, for example, you can have a smaller coolers, you can put out less heat and so on and so on, but also mobile GPUs Furthermore, APUs, because obviously a very power efficient architecture has a lot of implications when it comes to APUs. And quite honestly, it's going to be extremely interesting what products AMD comes out with over the next couple of years. But let's start things out with the basics. For some time now, we've known that, as I said, um, RDNA 3 is a lot more power efficient than RTX 40. AMD officially put out a slide which states that we're looking at a 50% performance per watt improvement, and they've managed to achieve this with multiple ways. They've also confirmed in the same slide that we're going to see chiplet-based technology, it's going to have next-generation Infinity Cache, yada, yada, yada. Some of my earliest leaks, um, when I was talking about the single GCD die, beforehand, of course, we were all on the dual GCD die, but then I put out it was just a single one, and I'd been hearing it was 350 to 375 watt TDP with some AIB models going up to 450. That was potentially being considered by AMD. Then Igor's lab, of course, leaked a PCB uh, diagram, which showed two 8-pin power connectors. Fast forward a little bit more, and we had AMD themselves confirm that there's no 16-pin connector. And then something we tackled yesterday is that, well, there's now leaked images of the reference card. It did look like it was an engineering sample and it had two 8-pin power connectors. This brings us to what I've been hearing now. We're looking at the XTX model, the 7900 XTX being, yes, 350 watts. I was told that it is incredibly energy efficient. Now that the reference card will have two 8-pin power connectors, but there are variants which will have three 8-pin power connectors and they will go higher. This is a little bit like NVIDIA have done with the RTX 40 series. You know how some AIBs, they've got, you know, much lower um, power limits, like, you know, 500 watts or whatever, and some go up to 600 watts, including the uh, Founders Edition card. I'm not quite clear how they're going to segment this. It's going to be very interesting, to be honest with you, to see how all of this plays out. And also what the actual you know voltage frequency curve is i'm also told that the gpus hit insane clock frequencies well over three gigahertz as well now the xt variant which is a step down that will be between 10 to 15 percent lower in terms of power consumption around 300 watts is what i'm being told furthermore i had confirmation that the leaked specifications that we've been seeing for some time 12,000 and 10,000 shaders respectively for the flagship and the slightly lower flagship cards are 100% accurate. So essentially we are looking at a graphics card which is going to be a very, very impressive. Now the performance is still not 100% known to me. To my understanding, the drivers are very much locked down right now and some of the earlier tests that we were getting performance information internally from AMD were with, let's say, non-finished drivers. Several sources have essentially told me that it's very hard to really have a great understanding of what the performance actually is. Personally, and I say this without knowing this 100%, so this is my guesstimate, I think it is going to be roughly two times that of the 6900 XT. I think it's going to depend on multiple criteria, the resolution, the you know fact whether it's got ray tracing enabled or not and of course the game the game engine and so on and so on quite some time ago i also put out a video stating some details regarding the infinity cache now just a quick reminder the infinity cache is spread across six mcds 
Each of those, of course, equal in value. So you have 16 times six, which of course makes 96 megabytes. And in some cases, you can also have the you know stacked one high, which means it's 192 megabytes. That's what, of course, we saw from Astronomics. So what I'm hearing is that essentially speaking, the Infinity Cache, and I mentioned this in a previous video, is a lot smarter. It's a lot better at being able to predict what data needs to go into the cache. And I was I mentioned in that video, I think it was like three to four times more efficient than its predecessor. So to put it another way, if you had 10 megabytes, obviously that's not you know really feasible, but let's just assume you had 10 megabytes of RDNA free cache, it would essentially be the equivalent of having 20, uh, 30, excuse me, 30 to 40 megabytes of RDNA too. Now, obviously it doesn't work like that all the time because different instructions, different data and all of that stuff. But also it seems that you can actually specifically, this is for developers, they can basically um, more optimize the cache. So it's no longer as dumb, basically, RDNA 2's cache versus RDNA 3. It's gonna be super interesting to see what this actually means for developer implementation. And it could also mean, of course, that um, we're gonna see kind of fine wine with developers releasing patches. It also naturally does mean that potentially, assuming this information is right, it could potentially mean some very interesting things for AMD going forward. Now, I've also been hearing from a couple of people that there definitely will be higher end SKUs in RDNA 3 than what will be announced in just a couple of days time. I don't know the details, just that they are going to be higher end SKUs and apparently they have not briefed AIBs. Now, I personally don't think this is a higher shade account variant. I personally think this is most likely the V caches, but I don't honestly know. Quite frankly, I'm not 100% certain on this information. I did hear about the, you know, Pro Duo cards, which apparently are two GCDs, but to my understanding, this is not for gaming. I think this is purely for professional work, and even then, I'm 50-50 whether these cards actually exist or not. Just to close out, um, honestly, I'm very excited to see what AMD bring with RDNA 3. I think RTX 40 is definitely an incredible architecture. I still stand by that, despite all of the teething problems and the PR issues that I think NVIDIA have wrought upon themselves. I personally feel, though, that RDNA 3 is going to appeal for people slightly differently. What really remains to be seen, of course, are what the benchmarks are able to achieve. And it's going to be very, very, very interesting, not just for the highest end SKUs, but to see how things trickle down, um, for example, to the mid range and the low range, especially when it comes to APUs. There is a ton of potential with the APUs going forward, and I don't mean Phoenix, but perhaps even subsequent architectures after that, maybe with even later revisions of RDNA, because obviously at the end of the day, a 16 megabyte or 32 megabyte, you know, infinity cache has a lot of potential on an APU, especially if it's a chiplet based design. It's going to be very interesting to see, honestly, how AMD can can create even you know the next generation Steam Deck, which we know of course is in development. The final thing I just wanna mention real quick guys, and this is concerning Meteor Lake. I'm actually working on a longer video for both Meteor Lake and Zen 5 as I have a ton of information, but a couple of sources basically reached out to me after the video from yesterday. So yesterday I was told that the six core information is probably wrong by a single source. Two other sources have reached out to me and said, yeah, that's almost certainly not true. It is eight core for Meteor Lake. What is not certain though is a, whether the 8-core launches initially or whether it comes later, and B, and this has been a rumor that we've seen from other places as well, whether Meteor Lake launches on desktop at all, it is potentially possible that we will not see Meteor Lake for desktop whatsoever, and it will basically go straight to Arrow Lake, which naturally does leave a ton of questions. The most obvious one is what they do during, you know, the... That what, 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 what the hell is going to happen? Like, are they just going to go from, I don't know, Raptor Lake to Arrow, like, for desktop? I, I, I honestly don't know how that's going to play out. It's going to be very interesting to see how Intel competes there. I'm not so certain I buy into that. But then again, Intel, well, yeah. <laughs> it's 
going to be it's going to be an interesting couple of years in tech um i think that's just about it though for this particular video i am feeling a little better than yesterday the food poisoning kind of rolled over me i'm still possibly a little flat so i apologize for that in the video but hopefully normal service shall resume in the next couple of days take care of yourselves guys have an amazing day stay safe bye for now